Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, man. It is so awesome. It's just so good for us to get a chance to join and welcome for joining us once again. Welcome to living in his image on purpose. I just believe that there is always so many different things that the Lord is going to reveal unto us so that we can go deeper into the things of God. Do you want to go deeper? I welcome you right now to go deeper, go deeper into your relationship with God, deeper into your faith, deeper into the intimacy that you would have with the Lord. I have something that I want to share with us on today that I really believe that will be uh, impactful to our hearts because I believe that even though we hear oftentimes and we listen to um, descriptions or adjectives as, as if you would, what it means to actually come closer to the things of God. But I believe that, you know, we've got to be even more practical so that a person can really say, OK, when I'm coming closer to God, what does it look like? How would it appear to be? And I believe that the Lord Jesus himself gives us so many parables that are so powerful because I believe that he uses his words to paint pictures so that that way when we when we see it, hallelujah, not seeing it from a natural standpoint, but when we see it in our spirits, when we see it in our minds, then we can begin to not only uh, uh, incorporate what we see, but then we can begin to recognize and be able to even acknowledge when we see it in others. You know, Jesus himself said, I need you to pick up your cross and follow me. Well, in order for us to follow him anywhere, we got to be able to see him. You know, you can't. It's almost like if you're going on um, on a journey with someone, you know, if you're riding and someone says, follow me to the particular store and you say, I don't know where it is. Well, follow me. Well, if you got behind them, you would expect them to drive at a pace where you could actually follow follow them. So please, I need you to understand, if you're expecting someone to follow you spiritually, you want them to come to a place where they can understand and, and know who they are in Christ, they got to be able to see something. I believe it's in 1 Corinthians 11 and 1. I believe the Apostle Paul says to follow me as I follow Christ, as, as I imitate Christ. So I want to just welcome you right now. What it is that we're going to be talking about on today is we're going to be talking about rejoicing. Um, I need you to understand that when it comes down to rejoicing in the Lord, there is so much purpose in how we celebrate. There's so much purpose. And when we say, God, I love you. When we say, God, we know that you're going to make this thing come together, as it says in Romans 8 and 28. We got to have a visual so that we can know, OK, when you tell me I need to rejoice, most people think I rejoice when I get the good job. I rejoice when I think I found the relationship that I've been hoping and longing for. I rejoice when I attain something that I've been looking for. But but I'm I'm talking about something a little bit deeper. I'm not necessarily talking about that you see something and then once you feel like you have it in your possession that then you can rejoice. No, I'm talking about a deeper level of rejoicing because the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So that means that there's got to be a level of rejoicing that we can give God by faith. And, and when we give God this this rejoicing, when we give him this this celebration, what we're really saying is, God, I know no matter what's happening, I know that you're, your word says that you are a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. I, I understand now that when your word says to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, you said that these other things are going to be added, meaning that that you're going to find incentives to to walking upright in the things of God. So so thank you so much for joining once again. And I want you to just turn right now. If we could, why don't you find Luke? Luke 15. And what we're going to talk about is not only rejoicing, but we're talking about the best robe rejoicing. The best robe rejoicing. What do you mean by that, Pastor? OK, well, there's a level of rejoicing. If you can say that, you know, on a scale of one to ten, what makes you the happiest? You know, some people may say, well, I can be happy, but, you know, you know, maybe uh, if, you, if you rate it on a scale of one to ten, maybe a one to three Maybe where, you know, you just kind of, oh, thank you. You know, you kind of nod your head just trying to be nice, you know. But then maybe five to seven, you may say, wow, thank you so much. I really acknowledge that you've done something for me. But what happens when you say on a scale of eight to ten, when you say the best that you can give? I believe this is where God wants us to be when he says that he wants us to be able to have the best robe rejoicing. 
Watch this, if you would. If you turn to uh, Luke 15, I want to show you a particular scripture where we're dealing with being able to rejoice. And certain things the Lord is going to illustrate for us so that we can understand, so that you can be able to take a look at yourself and be able to say, Lord, am I giving you my best praise? Am I giving you my best rejoicing that I can actually have? Even if I don't get something else that I'm hoping for, even if it looked like it's getting further away from me, Lord, when it comes down to your goodness, when it comes down to your faithfulness, Lord God, I know that there is nothing that can happen to me that's outside of your will and outside of your purpose for my life. So that means I'm going to rejoice in the Lord always. That's why David said, I got it. That's why it says, let everything that had breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that means that regardless, he says that from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, that means whatever could happen between the rising of the sun, the, the hours that take place in between and the setting of the sun, there is no situation I can be confronted with where I cannot find myself with the ability to be able to rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. So look, let's go right here. Go to, uh, if you would, Luke 15. And verse number 22, praise the Lord. Look what happens. Luke 15 and verse number 22. He says, but the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and put shoes on his feet. Praise the Lord. You all are familiar with this. This is actually the, the uh, story about the prodigal son, about how he left, went off into riotous living, started experiencing things with God, only the Lord knows who. And you know what? The Bible says that the father allowed him to leave. And now here it is. We're talking about the fact that the son has gotten to a place where he says, I'm coming home. I need to go home. Y'all, we're going to get deeper into this. But just on the fact of the son saying, I'm going home, did he work for it? No. Did he get a chance to pay his dad back some money, maybe some money that he blew? No. He didn't get a chance to earn anything. He just, all he had was the mindset and the action that accompanied the mindset to say, I'm going back home. I'm going back. I'm going back to where, I, where I'm supposed to be. Praise the Lord. You know what? As a matter of fact, some of you are listening right now and you're watching right now. And I need you to understand you. It's time for you to go back. You may be saying, well, wait a minute. They may not think that I deserve this or they may not think I deserve that. The bottom line is just for you to have the mindset to say, I'm going to return. There is a level of rejoicing that takes place in heaven, yo. I, I, I really need you to understand this because we're not just talking about something that takes place or transpires in the earth. We're talking about a level of rejoicing that takes place even in heaven. Please just stay with me right here because I really need you to understand and know that God is bringing us to a place where we're supposed to be living examples. Praise the Lord. This is why the Apostle Paul says that we are living letters. We are living word, living epistles being read by men every day. So that means that in the midst of everything that we're doing, hallelujah, are you carrying the appropriate praise that matches what my daddy has done for you? Hallelujah. I know you might say, I know God, but are you really allowing your praise and are your actions what is it that you're doing and is it lining up to the standard that the Lord has set? Praise the Lord. The Bible says that the father said, because of what has happened, go get the best robe. Praise the Lord. That's what we're talking about, the best robe rejoicing. I need you to understand just to survive. And to have another opportunity, uh, another opportunity to worship is cause enough for celebration. Just to say that whatever you went through did not kill you. Just for you to say, you know what, I'm going to get up and go to church again. Uh, I'm going to get up and I'm going to make a phone call to someone that's going to actually speak words of life to me. And even if it's words of correction. Just to be able to say, I desire truth. Th that's why the Bible says, blessed are those who hunger 
and thirst after righteousness. Hallelujah. I need you to know and understand that's worthy of celebration. Hallelujah. I know that they're not, they may not be walking upright the way ultimately that God is pleasing, that that's pleasing to God rather. But just for them to come back, levels of conversation that you have, if they're willing to come and partake in this, just like I already know, any one of you that chooses to tune into this type of telecast to hear the word of the Lord, believe it or not, the Lord himself says, my sheep know my voice and the voice of the stranger they will not follow. So you know what? That's reason enough to rejoice. Praise the Lord. So that means just to survive another opportunity for worship is cause enough for celebration. I want you to understand that before a sinner is even able to repent, when, when a sinner it come, comes to a place of repentance, can you think about or can you remember those things that's transpired in your life? Not to say I shouldn't be doing this. I'm not talking about when you acknowledge that you're wrong. I'm talking about when you come to a place where you say, it's time for me to do something different. Oh, my goodness. I can't do it the way I used to do it. Hey, wait a minute. Now I'm about to start putting a plan in place. Wait a minute. Because see, when we talk about repentance, there has got to be a picture. There's got to be an example. This is why I believe that God is looking for his children to have revelation. I believe in this season we're going to be going through so many different accounts because God has shown me that this is a season that the children, the sons and the daughters of God, we're supposed to we supposed to uncover the mysteries. There's so many different things that the world is still ignorant of, even people who are going to church, my God. Hallelujah. They're still ignorant of so many different things. So this is the season that we've got to begin to uncover the mysteries. So that they can begin to not only say that they see it, but if they really see it, we begin to put things in place. Praise the Lord. So I need you to understand that when it comes down to repentance, when it comes down to us being able to come to this place, I'm talking about this level of rejoicing that only the father himself can give. I want you to know that there's certain things that take place and I'm going to talk about each one of them. One of them is. Sometimes a person has to be in a position where they're being carried. Hallelujah. And just to say that they're being carried, the person who's doing the carrying is supposed to be able to rejoice. Hallelujah. Then there's another person that says, wait a minute, because I'm choosing to repent and now I'm trying to put some things in place. There's got to be a level of cleaning that you're able to do. Praise the Lord. Y'all watch. This is going to get really good. There's a level of cleaning that you're able to do. And, and now the cleaning is only representative, if you would, to show that you're willing to take your repentance and your relationship with God to the next level. And then the final one to show as a sign is the kiss and cover. When I say kiss and cover, I'm not talking about anything that's perverted. I'm not talking about any type of lust. I'm talking about genuine love where you can show intimacy from a standpoint of kissing the same way I would kiss my son, the same way I would kiss my daughters, because I'm saying that, you know what, as they're being restored, I can kiss them because no matter what you've done, it's not it's not grave enough to disassociate my connection with you. So now I can kiss you and I can still give you a hug of love. What am I doing? I'm covering you. I'm saying that we're still connected. Praise the Lord. So now let's back up. Let's get into this because you know what? When it comes down to being carried, the Bible says if any one of you desire or you see yourself as being spiritual, you who are strong must help bear the infirmities of the weak. What is that saying? That's saying if someone around you is weak and if you're deeming yourself to be strong, God is saying, can you actually be strong enough to pick them up and to carry them? Praise the Lord. Don't take my word for it. Let's get into this Bible real quick. Luke 15. Let's go up to verse number four. Luke 15 and verse number four, look at what this scripture says. 
Jesus is telling a parable right now because remember, we're still talking about a level of rejoicing that requires the best robe. That means on a scale of one to ten, we're talking about a ten. Praise the Lord. Now, let's not get it twisted. We're talking about a ten. Just say it's a ten. Praise the Lord. A ten level of rejoicing. Look what happens. He says, what man of you having a hundred sheep? If he lose one of his sheep, do he not leave the ninety nine in the wilderness to go after the one that is lost until he finds it? Look what he says in verse number five. And when he found it, he lays the sheep on his shoulders and he's rejoicing. Oh, my goodness. He didn't say that the sheep came running back on his own. We're talking about a level of rejoicing because, look, look, this, this is where we have to understand where the Bible says God says that he's going to be able to separate the sheep from the goat. We're going to have to be able to determine when a person is saying that they're a leader. Jesus said, whoever is the greatest among you, they are a servant. Praise the Lord. So now here it is. You have this man of God or you have this man that lost his sheep. First of all, he's working. He's out there looking for the sheep. And when he finds it, he's able to celebrate, first of all, that he sees it. But now he's able to grab the sheep and put the sheep on his shoulder. He's able to carry the sheep. And the Bible says now he's able to go all the way back and he's rejoicing. Praise the Lord. Are you rejoicing at the right moment? Y'all look, parents. Mothers, fathers, hallelujah, spiritual parents, aunts, your TD, your, your nene, whoever it is, your godparent. Y'all, please, let's make sure that we're exhibiting this level of celebration. Because the Bible says just for him to put his hand on the sheep, to carry the sheep, is now reason enough, enough for him to say, I can go home and I can rejoice. Praise the Lord. Do you have reason enough to rejoice? See, this is what the word of God is supposed to do. It's supposed to bring conviction. It's supposed to get us to a place where, wait a minute, I didn't even rejoice because I say you didn't even get the job. Wait a minute. Are you able to get him and cover him? Are you able to carry your child? Are you able to walk with them until you get them to that place? Sometimes you have to help them to get to the place where they're supposed to be. Hallelujah. Lord, help me to help them. Don't you ever forget. And you know what? Let me take that back. I was about to say, don't forget about what someone did for you. But maybe that might be the problem. Maybe you didn't have someone that did a lot to help you to get to that place where you're supposed to be in God. Oh, my goodness. I don't know about you, but there are certain people that played significant roles in my life. And I can remember. That when they stepped up, I, I can literally look back and feel like they carried me. Do you ever remember being carried? I can remember making phone calls, calling Apostle Clayton, praise the Lord, calling, calling uh, Pastor Sherman. I can remember calling Minister Woman of God or Letta Pittman. I can remember certain people that I was able to call. And you know what that was? It was like them taking my call was like allowing me to get on their shoulders so that they can carry me. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Some of you may be being carried right now. You may not know how to rejoice on your own while you're being carried. But for the one who's doing the carrying, it's like I still got you. I still got you. Some of you may feel like you're being carried as you're watching this telecast right now. Praise the Lord. And I want you to know by the spirit of the Lord, I still got you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord has given me strength right now. He's given us ability so that we can continue to reach out. Hallelujah. And the Bible says we are to rejoice because we can carry you. Hallelujah. Kingdom Broadcasting Network right now is providing shoulders so that men and women of God can help carry others because we have this burden to go out and to find those who are lost. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus has given us his spirit where now we take advantage of this, this holy anointing, this, this leading, if you would, to go out, which is why Jesus told Peter, do you love me? If you love me, Get your shoulders strong. Hallelujah. Go out and feed my sheep. Go out and carry. Praise the Lord. But not only do we have to carry, but we also, hallelujah, let's get ready. 
You have to be able to clean. Oh, my God. See, this is a spiritual growth. This is spiritual development. We go from being carried to being able to clean. So now you have to be willing to be held accountable. Praise the Lord. What are you talking about, man? A God, watch this. Drop down to verse number eight. Drop down to verse number eight. Praise the Lord. Look at what this scripture says. The Bible says in verse number eight. Either what woman, what woman having 10 pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, do it not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? Oh, my goodness. Verse number nine. And when she found it, she calls all her friends together and her neighbors saying, rejoice with me. For I have found the peace that I had lost. Oh, my God. Yeah, you're starting to pick it up right now. You're starting to get it. Why is this? Verse number 10. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repents. Now, wait a minute. The first situation, a person was being carried. They don't even know how to work. They don't know how to do anything. They just experience in the love of God. Wait a minute. These people are showing up or that person has showed up and now I'm being carried. Now, the second person is saying, wait a minute. I have something that that became of dear value. Praise the Lord. And now I realize, wait a minute, I don't have it anymore. How how, how is your prayer life right now? You may say, wait a minute, I used to pray all the time and now that it's lost, the Lord says, I'm going to give you an example. It's like a woman that had 10 precious pieces of silver, 10 pieces of jewelry, whatever it was, and it's very valuable to her. The Bible says when she realized that one of them is lost, guess what, y'all? You can't just pray without having fellowship. Come on, I, I know you're saying that you, you feel like you don't need church, but I want you to know you lost something that's valuable because I need you to understand that every single thing that is valuable to you. What about the time that you spend in the word of God? God says, I need you to go back and look for what was it that took it? Suppose you have to find your prayer life based on some things in a house that covered it, some things that you allowed to take place in your life. And now all of a sudden, certain people came into your life and certain things that was once valuable. Guess what? It's covered. God says, if it's lost, can you go out and seek it? Can you clean up some things in your life? Certain things. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. Certain things that have come into your life. That did not come by the spirit of God. And now you realize, wait a minute, I need to get rid of some things. I need to start cleaning up. Are you willing to sweep some things in your life until you find what was missing? Praise the Lord. The Bible says that sometimes you get to a place where you have to be willing to carry. But now we're talking about cleaning. Hallelujah. It might be some movies that you allowed yourself to look at. And now all of a sudden your senses, your discernment is being clogged up. Praise the Lord. It might be the language that's coming out of your mouth where you lost your sense of holiness and reverence for God. Hallelujah. You know how it was. I remember when I used to be in, around my parents, I didn't cuss at all. But I remember when I wasn't around my parents and I was around my familiars, if you would, I cussed like a sailor. Guess what, y'all? These are mysteries that has to be revealed. The Bible says bad company corrupts good character. Yo, there is a way that we have to continue to live. Because remember, I started off by saying the best robe rejoicing. There is certain things that stopping you from rejoicing and you got to go back and find it. You're not able to celebrate God like you used to. Guess what? It's something that's something dirty that came along. You can't even celebrate the fact that you found what was lost and you're willing to carry it. Now you're carrying it, but you're complaining. No, whatever, whoever it is that you're carrying, you can't let them hear you complaining. Lord, let me call you. You calling me for prayer again. No, you're actually calling me for prayer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I had a man, a man of God ask me at church last week. He said, Pastor, can you teach me how to pray? What I'm supposed to say? Oh, Lord, another one coming about to start wearing my phone. Man, learn how to pray on your. No, no. Praise the Lord. Let's carve out some time. Let's get this thing together. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Lord God. 
Praise the name. So, y'all, we can't complain. We got to be willing to carry. Then we got to be willing to clean. And then this last thing, y'all, the last thing, the last point, you got to be willing to cover. Kiss and cover. Praise the Lord. Let's go right back where we were. Watch this. Go to verse number 20. Hallelujah. Verse number 20. The Bible says, and he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck. Hallelujah. And kissed him. His father ran to his son and kissed him. What does that mean? I still recognize you. I'm still associated with you. You're still family. I'm still willing to cover you. You know why? Because, hallelujah, because you was dead before while you was out doing something different. You wasn't even looking for the things of God. You wasn't looking for the things of the kingdom. But for you to come back and find me, and if you know I'm walking in the kingdom, praise the Lord, you came back and found the kingdom. So now I'm supposed to reach out and I'm supposed to embrace you. Y'all, believe it or not, Jesus said, by this will men know that you are my disciples, by the love that you show one for another. Y'all, I challenge you, go back and pick up that person that you put down. And if you say, but I got so tired, that means you need to have a level of rejoicing. You need to be restored yourself. You know what? If you've gotten so weak to where you can't carry anyone, maybe you need to be carried. That means you need to get back in fellowship. You might find yourself saying, you know what? I don't have the power to clean like I used to. I'm tired of all that. Guess what? Maybe you've gotten some things in your life that has begun to cover up what was most necessary. And now you need some clean and praise the Lord. God says that there's certain people that he would actually put in your life. Praise the Lord. That will help to reveal and expose those things that have been covered. Hallelujah. So that now you can come to a place where you know and understand what it means. There's some things that came in your life that has covered up your worship, that has covered up your seeking of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Be willing to clean it up, clean it up. And guess what? Y'all, the last thing is. Someone has come back into your life and now you have to be. Guess what? You have to be willing to let people go sometime when they say, I don't want this. I don't want the kingdom. I don't want the love that you're trying to show to me. Sometimes you have to let them go. But when they return, oh, my God, when they return, you got to give them what kind of rejoicing? Level 10, level 10. Every time they come back. Thank you so much for joining in with us to living in his image on purpose. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah.